welcome students back to another interesting session which is on the bone tumors it's a very important session according to me where a lot of mcqs can come in this topic let's come to the introduction of the bone tumors the bone tumors is a broad term used for either benign and malignant as well as tumor like conditions of the bone metastatic deposits in the bone are commoner than the primary bone tumors some tumors are multiple myeloma which is the commonest primary bone malignancy you must remember this it can definitely come as a mcq commonest primary bone malignancy is multiple myeloma osteochondroma is the commonest benign tumor of the bone so you must remember that too which can come as a mcq we now come to the classification of the tumors which can be divided into one is the bone forming tumors and second is the cartilage forming tumors and then is the giant cell tumors in this we come first to the bone forming tumors the benign ones you must always divide into benign and malignant benign means it is not is not so dangerous it may be there and you not have to so much worry but sometimes the benign may get transformed into malignancy but malignant ones you must take care and aggressively treat so in the benign tumors we come first one the bone forming tumors are osteoid osteoma osteoma or osteoblastoma while in the malignant bone forming is the osteosarcoma all malignant you must you must remember the word sarcoma always comes in the cartilage forming tumors the benign ones are known as osteochondroma enchondroma and chondroblastoma chondros the word is for cartilage while the malignant one is again chondro sarcoma the giant cell tumors are present which can be benign as well as malignant in the other cl classification we come to is the marrow tumors in the marrow tumors we have the malignant tumors which are classically the evings sarcoma the plasma cell tumor the multiple myeloma and lymphoma we'll be discussing about evings sarcoma in detail little later while the vascular tumors can be the benign ones are known as hemangioma and malignant one is known as the angiosarcoma again sarcoma the word for malignancy and because it is a vascular and blood related it is hemangioma is for the benign one while in the last classification is others where benign can be if nerve related that is neurofibroma neurilymoma while the malignant ones are liposarcoma malignant fibrous histiosarcoma and adamantinoma there are tumor like lesions very important ones are the bone cyst which can be either the simple bone cyst also known as unicaramel bone cyst we you know call it as ubc while the other one is the aneurysmal bone cyst which is also known as abc while the other ones are fibrous dysplasia which can be either monostatic or polyostatic the other ones are eosinophilic granuloma reproductive giant cell granuloma while last one is the fibrous cortical defect now we come to one by one the important uh, tumors which we will be covering first one is the osteoclastoma commonly as a giant cell tumor in the giant cell tumor let's come to the pathology first then the age group and the bones commonly affected the first is pathology is in giant cell tumor by the word giant cell tumor there is undifferentiated spindle cells profusely interspersed with the giant cells itself the tumor stroma is highly vascular in this disease the age group commonly is the second to fourth decade that is 20 to 40 years the bones commonly affected are the lower end of the femur upper end of the tibia and lower end of the radius these are the classical sites mostly it's around the knee joint so you remember the lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia is commonly affected followed by the distal end of the radius come to the clinical features of osteoblastoma first is the symptoms that is the pain and swelling is always accompanied while the signs are it is a bony swelling it is eccentrically located in the bone that is it is not in the midline of the bone it is eccentrically located that is classical feature it's got a smooth surface and lastly it is quite tender while the radiological features are very very essential and you must definitely remember and this can definitely come in the mcq 
The relatable features are it is eccentrically located, one, second, it is a solitary lytic lesion, two, and lastly, it is the soap bubble appearance. You must remember that the giant cell tumor is always associated with soap bubble appearance. There is no calcification and there is expansion of the overlying cortex. So it definitely is quite a increased tumor, especially seen in the lower end of femur or upper end of tibia. So don't forget it is extremely located and it is having a classical soap bubble appearance. This is a cut section of a tumor osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor taken from the distant radius. This is the whole part which is part of the bone as well as the tumor which is excised and this is the cut section which has been shown over here. This is the x-ray picture of a giant cell tumor of the lower end of the femur. You can see a classical, it is eccentrically located, it is not in the midline, this is the midline and this is the eccentric position and it gives like a soap bubble appearance. You can see the cortex is expanded also and there is no calcification seen. The other giant cell tumor, this is another x-ray picture of the upper end of the tibia where you can again see that the proximal part is affected. It also gives again a eccentric position and a little soap bubble appearance is also seen. We come to the treatment part of the giant cell tumor. Usually a excision is done of the part which is affected and you can also use the example if it's a distal end of radius you can use the fibula. Part of the fibula is cut and you can also use the lower end of the ulna. You can use that and fix it at the side which has been excised and you can fix it with the help of uh, plating. The other technique is curettage with supplementary cryotherapy can be done that is using cold then excision with reconstruction you have to reconstruct it then there is arthrodesis that is after that there is blue fusion of the joint in a functional position for the patient arthroplasty is replacement of the whole part with help of a mega prosthesis and lastly is the amputation if this tumor even though it's the benign it can go into malignancy and they are all aggressive tumors and there's a lot of high chances of recurrence so you must treat it well and if needed you may have to amputate that part lastly is radiotherapy if the vertebra is involved coming to the second important uh, tumor is the osteogenic sarcoma or osteosarcoma this is also the second most common and highly primary malignant tumor of the bone so you must remember the second most common is the osteosarcoma which again also can be asked in the MCQ. The pathological malignant tumor of the mesenchymal cells characterized by formation of osteoid or bone by the tumor cells. That is very very important. The classification of the osteosarcoma can be either clinically or histomorphologically. We will come one by one to each one. One is the clinical classification. In the clinical classification, we subdivided into primary and secondary. In the primary tumors, which is more commoner, it is usually seen in the age group of 15 to 25 years. There is no known pre-malignant conditions related to this. So it is the primary tumor and much more malignant than the secondary tumors, you must remember. While in the secondary group, age group is usually above 45 years. So what are now the pre-malignant conditions associated with this tumor are first is the Pagash disease, fibrous dysplasia, irradiation to the bones that is radiation therapy, multiple osteochondroma, multiple end chondromatosis and lastly the chronic osteomyelitis. Let's see the bones which are commonly affected in this condition. The bones which are affected are lower end of the femur, upper end of the tibia and upper end of the humerus. Again this also tumor is affecting around the knee joint. So you must remember that most of the joint, these tumors are affecting the joints. Secondly, the metastasis is through the bloodstream, which is usually through the lungs. Let's come to the clinical features of this condition. First is the symptoms, that is pain, which is followed by the swelling. While the signs are swelling in the region of the metaphysis, so it's a metaphyseal tumor. You must remember, this is also classical MCQ question, which is uh, always asked is, the osteosarcoma commonly affects the metaphyseal region. The skin over the swelling is very very shiny. It is very very tense 
and classically prominent veins are present and the swelling is warm and tender there is definitely signs of inflammation which you must take care of and lastly is the margins which are not very well defined this is an excellent picture of uh, osteosarcoma of the femur you can see how the whole huge swelling is there mostly in this young patient involving now not only the metaphysis and it's expanded completely you can see how the skin is very very tense it's shiny and you can see prominent veins which are present so this is classical you can make out that this is the osteosarcoma of the femur we come to the investigations which are essential in bone tumors first is the x-ray in the x-rays we see that there is area of irregular destruction in the metaphysis one overlying cortex is eroded that is the cortical bone gets eroded new bone formation in the tumor matrix occurs and there is basically a periosteal reaction you must remember two very very important parts of osteosarcoma one is the cordman's triangle that is the lower end it forms a triangular shape at the lower end of the example femur if you take where it is commonly affected and secondly is classically the sun ray appearance or sun burst just like the rays of the sun it gives that appearance in the tumor so these two you must always remember in the x-ray cordman's triangle and sun ray is always associated with the osteosarcoma uh, serum alkaline phosphatase is generally elevated in this condition biopsy is a must and always helps in confirming the diagnosis you cannot go in for any procedure or operative treatment without confirming the diagnosis that can be only done by doing a biopsy which is the gold standard for uh, doing the investigations for these tumors this is a x-ray picture of the osteosarcoma of the lower end of femur you can see that there is a sunburst or sun ray appearance around the cortex and this is where usually the cordman's triangle is formed this forms the lower end of the triangle let's come to the third important uh, tumor is also known as the ewing sarcoma this is a very highly malignant tumor you must remember that age group is it's much seen in the younger age group that is the first and second decade of life that is 10 to 20 years we come to the gross pathology is the gross is it is a large tumor it is quite grayish white in color and it is soft while when you see the histopathology when you see the histopathology slide you will see sheets of uniform small cells resembling lymphocytes you can pick up that on histopathology again the bones commonly affected we come to the long bones diaphysis part of the femur and tibia again the bones which are commonly affected is the femur and the tibia but you must remember now the ewing sarcoma affects the diaphysal part this also can come as a mcq and you must remember that ewing sarcoma affects the diaphysis and earlier we remembered that osteosarcoma was affecting the metaphysis so you must know which region what tumor commonly is present while the flat bones are pelvis and calcaneum which are affected we come to the clinical features of this tumor the symptoms are the patient has pain he has fever and there is definitely swelling sometimes there is history of trauma which is present in the signs we have swelling located in the region of the diaphysis with features of classical of malignancy so this is quite a malignant tumor already mentioned so you must see these signs and symptoms very carefully other thing is the radiological features the radiological features of this tumor is classically it's a lytic lesion in the medullary zone of the mid shaft with cortical destruction that is one and there is new bone formation around that in forms in layers so classical appearance is the onion peel appearance just like a onion and it is got lot of coverings it exactly looks like the same so this also definitely can come as a mcq question so you must remember the new bone which forms in layer and for ewing sarcoma is onion peel appearance we come to the treatment part another important thing is like mostly everything has to undergo the chemotherapy and or radiotherapy or surgery and most of the tumors are excised but you must remember the ewing sarcoma classically is radiotherapy is the essential treatment because it is highly radio sensitive tumor so this also can come as a mcq which is the highly radio sensitive tumor is ewing sarcoma 
The chemotherapy drugs commonly used are cyclophosphamide, vincristin, adriamycin, which are given in cycles. This is the uh, X-ray picture of Ewing sarcoma of the tibia, upper end of the tibia, which you can see how it is a lytic lesion. It is present only in the diaphyseal region and it gives an onion peel appearance. Come to the fourth important tumor, which is the osteochondroma, also commonly known as exostosis. It is the most common benign tumor. One, again a MCQ point, arising from the spongy bone. It is covered by a classical cartilaginous cap, which also should be remembered. Age group is during the growth period or the growth spurt. And there is a lot of, in the sex, is the male predominance is present. So remember that this is the most common benign tumor, osteochondroma or exostosis, which are the common sites of affection. Commonly sites is the tenderness attachment and is again usually around the metaphyseal region of the long bones again. Let's go which are the common ones is the lower end of the femur, the tibia, the hip, humerus upper third as well as the elbow. Come to the clinical features in this condition is again the symptoms. Only when complications like bursitis, malignant change, mechanical disruption to the joint, fracture or nerve compression occurs, then you have to usually the patient presents it. Otherwise there is pain and definitely swelling. In the clinical features we come to the signs that is the osteochondroma is a firm swelling. That second is the it is non-tender swelling fixed to the bones around the joint so it's quite not movable easily. The bursa if it is inflamed will give rise to tenderness and local warmth and joint movements will be decreased because very very close to the joint it causes a mechanical block. So if it's around the elbow the patient will not be able to flex the elbow. If it's around the knee joint you will not be able to flex or extend completely. So that is very very important. The radiographic features are it is the outgrowth of the bone at the metaphysis. It can be either sessile or pedunculated and maybe have a stalk. Third is that the cartilage and the capsule not seen unless it ossifies. So cartilage cap I mentioned earlier, if it ossifies then only it can be seen. Coming to the treatment part, usually there is no need of any surgery because it is one thing, it's a benign tumor, chances of it to go into malignancy are less. So if it is symptomless, you don't have to worry about it. Obviously there is cosmetically doesn't look good. But if there is want to do a surgery, the surgical excision is only indicated when one is when there is joint interference, when the person cannot do his activities or he or she cannot do flexion extension completely. If there is a painful bursitis, that is second. And if there is a fracture of the bone stock, then you have to take care and you have to do a surgical excision of this whole tumor. Malignant changes, that is the local radiation converts it into malignant variety. So sometimes even if it's benign, because of radiation and other things, local radiation given to the patient it can go into malignant variety. Pressures on the vessels, that is vascular structure and nerve vessels and nerve adjoining the region causing a neurovascular complication. So in that cases, you must take care and you must do some surgical intervention. We now come to the end of the important topic of bone tumors. Thank you so much.